and I'm going to let in all of the animals. Let's see here. All, the, all the walruses shall begin. <laughs> all right, move this down. All right, we got a good group today. Oh boy. All right. Boom. Boom. <clears throat> He's cuter than you. Wait, wait, wait. How do I do this? Uh, oh, hey, what's up, gentlemen? One out of 72. Hi. How are you guys today? <laughs> Hope everybody had a nice Can I day. make her a little older? Because I don't want her to go die. Um, I think... Uh, I'm a really new person, I understand. Yeah, I but... Mute some of you all. If you guys can remember to mute, that would be great. And then please, you know, say hi and talk, but just keep the thing muted at the at the at the moment. Oh God! Oh God! Oh, what you got there, Ben? Ooh. Wow! This is the thing I had half finished last time. Hold uh, that closer, closer to you, Ben. <laughs> that thing you. is awesome. Closer to you. I want to get the whole thing on this picture. Ooh. Yes. Oh my God. Well done. Uh, give me one second, gentlemen. I got to switch my settings here so it doesn't ha uh, time out on me. It's all plugged in. So, okay. Oh my gosh. Another one. Hold on. Let's see that. Wow. Okay. Freeze. I drew a guy like that when what I was your age. Mine, is that a, mine was a bobcat. What is that guy? I think it's a Fortnite character. Ah, what is the red? It almost looks like a sliver of a moon. I know it's not a moon. That is in the middle of the eye. What does that signify? Scar. Scar. Oh, okay. So, you know, I'm not familiar with these figures. So, thank no, you. Thank you. Um, all right, boys. So, we're going to talk about walruses on like a number of levels. <clears throat> I've taught this class uh, kind of two times, kind of three times. And it's actually, this is actually a walrus. And I have, I have some seals in here. Um, seals look exactly like my dog. So it's going to be kind of fun if we do get to the seals. Um, let me slide this over and then this is like a super simplified version of a, of a walrus, but it actually has a lot of really important component parts. So I wanted to do this first as a warm up to make it easy. Um, and then also to like kind of me as we're sketching this, point out the crucial components of what a, um, what a, raw, a walrus you know, in, you know, entails. Um, so let's just start in the middle and let's do the nose. Um, and we're gonna do the nose, but I want you to be able to see the nose as a triangle. So yes, the top of the nose um, is rounded and then he's got two sides, but it's still a three-sided form. So I'm, I'm actually unsure about whether triangles are in fact necessarily have to have straight lines or they just have to have three sides. Um, you're on mute if anybody's trying to talk. Mm. Um, so the nose of the walrus, um, is curious. It's got, um, a center crease, and then it's got these two kind of like L shaped nostrils that he's really able to like open and close. Um, not necessarily like a whale blowhole, but similar, um, there it's really high. The noses are really high up in the head. And I, I suspect that the walrus is when they're in the water you know, they don't have to get fully out of the water to breathe. Like they, you know, their nose is the first thing that kind of breaks the crest of the, uh, the surface of the water. Anyway, they're high up in the head. Um, <clears throat> and then their most defining characteristic other than their tusks <clears throat> are these like massive mustache regions, which kind of like turn into their cheeks sort of. Um, and that's where we're gonna get these two circles. So as far as warm ups go, Let's try to get, you know, the first circle that doesn't connect to the bottom of the nose. Whatever the first circle is going to be, that's not the hard part. The hard part is getting the second one to match it. And you can use your 
your own skills, your own sensibility is where you'd probably want to make it lighter on the lighter side of things so that if it, if you get it wrong, woo, ooh, buddy, if you get it wrong, you can correct it. Oh, that's so not right. All right. Well, that's why it's a warm up. I have drawn almost <laughs> nothing today. I'm definitely it's not like good. you. I know. Well, I've got a late night coming up, so I was basically, that's not so bad. Cool that. Um, okay, so uh, as we're practicing these circles, let's do the round part of the head. Um, walruses have like what you would kind of consider small heads. I don't know if it's in fact like a small skull or whether their head, their eyes are positioned in a way that makes the back of their head look small, or they're so fat that like all of their musculature and bone structure is just buried in all this blubber because they are in ice cold water. I don't know what of those there are because I haven't really seen one in person, um, but I can warn you that their heads are very round and they're very low. Mine is even lower than it should be. Um, and I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm, I'm working with a pencil that I can't erase. So I'm gonna make it look like his head is turned further back. Um, this artist <laughs> made the eyes kind of more friendly in the sense that they're like almost more human or dog-like, that they're close to the middle. Um, Walrus's eyes are actually really far on the outside yeah. of their heads. Um, and then they have, not only do they have pronounced upper eyelids and brows, they also pronounce lower eyelids and brows. So I'm putting his eyebrows up here just to like give him, you know, give this artist credit for acknowledging it. Um, part of what we're doing here is to like point out what are the exaggerated components of a walrus. And then when we look at the real walrus, um, we can compare it and see what was included, what was accurate, what wasn't. Um, the mouth here is, you know, you can see there's an opening. So there's the bottom, there's the top of the bottom lip. Um, we have no real upper lip to speak from, speak of. The upper lip is kind of blended into the mustache region. And out of this intersection, um, this is where we're gonna get the walrus tusks. So I'm put, I'm not doing the bottom of the lip just yet until I get the sides of the tusks at least. Um, the tusks are kind of curvy. They curve in um, and it's a cartoon so you can make them like thick or thin, whatever. I'm actually making mine like much longer. Mine are almost like so long that they look like a saber tooth. You know, this is a puppy. I guess they're called puppies. Walruses, baby, baby walruses. You know, in the cartoon that is. Pups. Pups, yeah, they are pups. I had a feeling that was the case. Um, if you want to add, you know, make it, you know, your own. You can make this little pink tongue. Shoot. Um, and then this is the part where I think it's like the strangest in terms of the interpretation of this artist. Um, having all of the whiskers seemingly spring forth from the nose. Um, the, I guess the best thing you can say is that they start internally and then they exit, you know, longer, they're wider, they go on the outside of those cheeks. So in order, in the spirit of bilateral symmetry, I'm going to do, you know, one side and then the other side, this side and then the other side, kind of like one by one so that I can get you know, I can emphasize the symmetry, even if it's not the same as his version. That looks so weird. I'm telling you, it is a little bit weird the way that this artist drew this walrus, but they do have massive whiskers and we are gonna look at other variations. Um, little side note, like the head and the neck and the body, <clears throat> if I zoom out here, um, they almost all blend into one. We know that there's gotta be a head. We know there's gotta be a neck. We know there's gotta be a shoulder, um, but there's so much blubber um, that it's actually like a little bit hard to tell. So that's where we're going Is in the future. Is there going to be a realistic variation? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I know. And the, the, and the ones that I have are really good. One of them I've drawn, one of them I haven't drawn. Um, let's make, Let's just, um, while this is zoomed out, I'm gonna just show, an, I'm gonna do, we're, we're gonna do another um, cartoon version since this doesn't, didn't take very long. I only did one cartoon version when I was teaching like the younger kids and um, 
I think it's going to be worth it to do both. And you guys are obviously more than capable of handling that. Do we have a minute warning on this? Yeah, yeah you got a minute warning on this guy. <clears throat> um, yeah, as we, as we have this one minute warning, um, you can kind of anticipate, um, you know, he's got some discoloration. There's also a, a, a little, you can't see it in his head right here, but they do have uh, like little teeny ears, not like birds that have eardrums, but no ears. They actually do have like really, you know, small ears. And then they also have like a lot of like little patches and discoloration and like, you know, their skin is like kind of rough and textured. Um, so that's kind of interesting too. Um, the top of their nose I've also found is like, is kind of darker. I don't know, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but um, there we go. We can just, I'm just like trying to use up a minute. <laughs> oh, I didn't even see that, that's kind of cool. So there, there is a highlight, there's a highlight on his nose there. That's, we could we could include that. Just darken up that nose. Yeah, his nose is nice and filled in. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Trevor, can you move yours, um, your phone away for just a second before you move on? Uh, just so you can see the drawing? So you want, yes. so you want to photograph it? Please. Oh, you don't right. want my phone in at all. Uh, you know what? That's fine. Yeah, I think I like, can go like that. You have two phones? One for filming, one for being on Zoom, one for filming, and one for um, just showing the picture. That's awesome. I don't know who's showing it right now because I can't, I haven't figured out how to put the name on there. Um, to answer your question, I have my phone. This is my cell phone, the one that's down mm -hmm. here. Um, the filming from up above. Xavier. That's a nice job, Xavier. Hold that up again. Yeah, boys. Closer to I'll you. Good job. Thank you. What are the um, spots for? Uh, there. Uh, when we look at the realistic one, there's like a ton of spots. Nice, um, Ben. Like, uh, like weird variations on them. These look good. I like those spots. All right, we're not quite there yet. Let's. Oh, oh we should. Oh, we could have done this guy. I like that he's got that. Yeah, the color the color's weak. <laughs> I will not make you do this guy. That guy's good. This is the one we're gonna finish on. Oh and my goodness. And where is he? Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's try this guy. I think this guy is not very good at all. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing, I want to show him as an example of um, like kind of an unsuccessful example of um, a walrus. So it's not gonna take us too long, but maybe you could even switch to, it's full color, so you can maybe switch to like gray or something. <clears throat> All right, cool. Maybe I will switch to gray. Do I have gray? Oh, I got purple, I got soft purple. Right, zoom out a little bit. You could use like a normal pencil. Yeah, yeah, I could just use graphite. I found this one, I don't know. Might be too light, do purple. I did purple the last time. All right, so um, the no, oh, this is kind of interesting too. Yeah, that's sweet. All right, um, so we've got the nose, which starts with a round part at the top. And then instead of a, um, a triangle, uh, this artist makes it walrus. the bottom of a bowl. And we don't Let's really know. That. I mean, I'm, I honestly, I'm kind of judging it a little bit. Unsuccessful walrus. John, hold that closer All to you. All he needs is a nose. You're just missing a nose. No, closer to you, away from the stream. Away, 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 and further down. Down. Good. Oh, <laughs> one more time. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right, so for the mustache region, um, this artist breaks it down into, I would say, three separate sides. So there's a top of the mustache, a side of the mustache, and then a bottom of the mustache. So it's going to be top, it's going to be side, and there's going to be bottom. Moustache. Now, moustache. So that is um, very generalized, I recognize, and it doesn't wind up remaining straight. So the top of the top 
shape tr transitions with a curve down into the bottom shape, the side shape rather, and then the side transitions into the bottom. And then like the upper lip kind of creates this like triangle. You know, the, the space below the lip makes like an arrow or a triangle, which I kind of like. Um, maybe I was judging this too hard. Um, so the nose almost, you know, it, the upper lip goes right out of the nose. There's a little bit of a plane change and the curve down the side and then it rounds underneath. So I started with one, two, three, and then I eased up those transitions. Um, there's a very weak lower lip, kind of feels like a dog. And then he uses his tusks. They're kind of rounded. I guess they do come to a point. Interesting. <clears throat> um, in the spirit of um, not of like avoiding circles, I would say um, this one has a side of the head, side of the head, and then it has a clear top of the head. So the head is broken up into kind of three planes. And if you emphasize one side and the other and the top, then you can you know, transition one side into the other, transition the right side into the top. It's actually kind of nice in the sense that you have a straight, then a curve, then a straight, then a curve, then a straight again. <clears throat> um, you can think about the eyes in, in three circles. There's a black rim, there's a gray center, and a white highlight. So black rim, white highlight, gray center. Um, I'm noticing that there is, a, in fact, a highlight on this guy's nose here, too. <clears throat> So the things that have been introduced that are new um, are nothing. Everything that we've got so far was in the other one. Up mustache region, nose, head, eyes, mouth, tusks. Um, now, the way that the whiskers are introduced here are a little bit different. He's got some dots that are kind of randomly placed, which I use dots in some of my finished drawing, but I didn't place them randomly. He placed them randomly and they are large, medium, and small. And he only has three whiskers. One, two, three. One, two, three. I guess they're a little bit thicker than usual. Not usual, but thicker than how you would make like kind of a cat's whiskers. I mean, he's got his shoulders coming down. Very, very narrow, very like small in terms of um, you know, what the nature of a walrus is, is that the widest part is, or the narrowest part is the head and it just gets wider from there rather than the head being wider than the shoulders. Again, cartoon. Um, we're gonna try a real one uh, you know, right now. <clears throat> and we're gonna so combine we're gonna the things that we know about the cartoons with the realistic. <clears throat> Let me let Ben in here, make sure he's in. Good, welcome. All right. Did you get bumped off? You back in? Anybody have any questions? Um, I'm gonna give a, I don't know, give a one minute warning. I'm gonna color this guy a little bit. That's oh, really darn. Excuse me. What happened, Stace? Oh, you know, I just broke it. Oh, colored pencil point. These things happen. Indeed. Um, you could kind of think about the walrus, this walrus, if you wanted to um, think about them in terms of uh, just the lights and the darks. The nose is going to be the darkest part. And I might switch, I wish I had a darker blue. I'll switch to my regular pencil. Um, I'll make that nose, oh, it doesn't even read as being dark because it's shiny. I have some charcoal. Um, do you think the nose and the shoulders are the same level of darkness?
It's interesting because the nose reads darker. It's certainly but dark. I don't know. Um, so you want to be able to, even though it's a simple drawing, you do want to be able to see how this artist um, distributed his you know, lights and darks. So um, the silhouetted edge of the seal's head is darker than the skin. So the silhouetted edge is dark. Um, you can make the same case for um, the snout. So the snout has a light gray silhouette and then an even lighter gray filling. The nose is black, the shoulders are black, and the whiskers are even darker still. You don't have to copy them exact. It's just, I'm just trying to introduce to you the idea that, you know, as an artist and as a designer, you do, do need to choose um, what lines are light, what lines are dark, what uh, shapes are filled in, light, which fill, which are, are dark. And, you know, that's what's kind of interesting about this, this one that we just did. Where is it? This guy, that's the line drawing. And then here's where he filled it in. It's not as, the, the coloring isn't as, as advanced as, you know, this guy. The, the coloring in here is actually, you know, it's actually more complicated than I had originally anticipated. You know, the round cheeks um, make all the difference in the world reading it as a walrus. I still think it looked like my dog Bailey. <laughs> all right. So really, 30 more seconds on this one and then we'll switch over. Um, once, you, once we've kind of invested this very simple, um, you know, cartoon drawing, drawing the real walrus is actually exhilarating. Um, so I hope you're ready for it. <clears throat> Stace, can I see your, did you get to sketch them again or you did something else? Oh, me? Yeah. I'll do uh, like my new background. Uh, oh yeah, he's good. So nice. you are doing some color. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, guys, let's try this next one. I'll, maybe I'll give you a choice. Um, do you want to sketch this guy? Or I feel like this is the guy. I like the in water one. That one just hey. looks like he's against the ch he's pinned against the chalkboard. <laughs> that sounds so uncomfortable. I, I mean, this guy, is, this guy is pretty great. I have to admit, he was awesome. Um, I got to prop him up, though, because of the light. Can we also draw a polar bear in the background swimming to eat the walrus? Um, I think you should, yes. Why, though? Wait, what did he say? A what to eat the walrus? A Polar, uh, bear, polar bear behind the walrus to I'm eat it. Drawing a glass of water. Mm. Why not? Well, the mm. walrus would have swam away. We would have drowned the polar a bear. A classic polar bear eating walrus drawing. Yes. Um, Sharp. It's just another. It's just another day at Mitchell School. <laughs> All right. That should give me enough real estate here. Okay, gentlemen, uh, fire up your engines here. All right, I gotta figure out how to do this. Um, let's do first things first. Let's start with what we know how to do, and then we'll build out from there. So what I think, I think what we should all feel relatively comfortable with is the nose. So we'll draw the top of the nose, and then we'll draw one curving side down and one curving down here. Oof. Um, I think that the nostrils, this, I haven't drawn this one before. The nostrils are 
they look like staples. Do you see how they look like staples on either side? There is a crease in the middle, like a subtle, gentle crease. But then there's these two relatively massive nostrils that it makes the letter C on that side. And then it makes the, I don't know, a backwards letter C on the other side. Wow, that's amazing. <clears throat> I definitely say it's uh, more of a staple. Yeah, it looks like a staple. And yeah, I made my, and it's, it's slightly different. It's slightly angled a little bit differently. It's fine. Um, all right, so let's start from the middle um, and let's do the next shape of the, this mustache region. And I'm gonna do the side, I'm gonna find the middle where the, cause there's one mustache region on the right. There's another mustache region on the left. Um, and just to point out a couple interesting components, the whiskers start very small at the top. And then as they get, the rings get lower, they get bigger and bigger. And then as the rows get further to the outside, they also get longer. So they get longer top to bottom and longer left to right. So that's kind of interesting. I have not overtly acknowledged that in my own, um, you know, even, you know, drawing a walrus. I will, I think I'm gonna keep it zoomed in a little bit here. Well, no, I should show the whole. I love those tusks. Oh my God, they're so cute. All right, um, so here we go. There's this big distance between the nose and the upper lip you know, at the bottom of the, the bottom of the lower lip, the length of the upper lip, you know, where the mouth comes together in this frown, it is, it is definitely a frown. So I'm gonna follow that front of the nose down to the frown. What if I just put the frown in? Okay. Um, and we're gonna get what I would consider a, um, a trapezoid. So follow me, follow me here. There's gonna be, no, we won't do that. Um, we're going to do the, the part of the nose, the part of the, the mustache that's immediately underneath the nose, then it angles down, which is like kind of the top of the three sides. So it goes one, two, three to the corner. And I'm just going to make a semicircle for the bottom. This is, I drew this differently the other day and I'm so happy. I'm doing it this way. <clears throat> okay, so this is the right side. So again, I've got the top up here where the nostril is, then it angles down and it transitions into the side. So across, down, and then down the long side. So let me try and find that on the other side. So we got the flat part by the nose. And then it's so weird, it like almost disappears. So I'm gonna put another straight you know, an angle down right here. It does angle down. Okay, so this comes across, angles down, across, angles down, it's small. And then I'm gonna curve into the mouth down here. Why is this side so much bigger? Did I misdo that? I it's think because it's proportion. at an angle. Because it, it you didn't like, misdo it, it's at an angle. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's both. I think it's at an angle, but I think this side might be a little bit too small. I'm just gonna use my. Yeah, maybe, but you can always re-angle like your walrus's blubber. Really, isn't <laughs> like that has much detail in it. Okay, it's I expanded it. The face. I didn't expand it too much. Um, let's, we got to get the, we got to get those, uh, tusks in there or else no one's going to believe that it's actually a, uh, walrus. It could be an overgrown baby walrus. Like an, oh, the thing looks like an ogre. Okay. So the, the tusks are coming out of the mouth because they're teeth. Um, so we've got this upper lip that's in front of the tusk and then the lower lip. So the upper lip and the lower lip make like a sandwich and we're getting the tusks coming out. There's a tusk coming out there. This hilarious lower jaw. And then a tusk coming out from here.
Um, the way I drew this before, Stacy, I don't know if you remember, but I was like, we got to get into the eyes because the sooner we get into the eyes, the sooner it's going to look like, you know, it's going to look like the animal. And I got so enticed by that whisk, by those whiskers and the whiskers. tusks. I was like, I just sidestepped it. So <laughs> let, let's get into the eyes. Um, let's get into the eyes sooner than later. So we've got the nose. And I mean, I'll come back in and correct this tusk if I need to, but I've got the nose, I've got whiskers on, I've got the mustache region on both sides. I've got two tusks. And then I'm seeing that this jaw ends right here. So I put a line, but I think that jaw transitions into the double chin, like the, the jaw and the chin transition into the double chin, but I'm gonna have to come back and work that. Um, there's a brow ridge. You know, if you go from the nose, you gotta come up and find the eyebrow ridge so that it can take you into the eyes on the right and it can take you into the eyes on the left. So you got this eyebrow ridge and then it's gonna curl down into the eyes here. And then it's gonna cross and curl into the eyes down here. Now the eyes on the left are, are instead of being like a circle, it's gonna be like a very thin oval because you're barely seeing any of it. There's the side of the snout. We get the side of the snout here too. Um, as far as the, the eyes go, you do see the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid. And then I'm just gonna put a little pupil in the middle for right now. The eyes like look like that he does not have any pupils. It just like looks like flat out rage. <laughs> if I can zoom in on it. I there is I like, like your in detail description, moment. Miles. That was very descriptive. Yes, it was. Um, while I'm zoomed in here, do you see this little nub right there? That's his ear. It's so close to his eye. Look how close the uh, ear it's is. It's also so small. Yeah, it isn't actually a nub. It's actually a hole. I mean, it does look like it sticks out a little bit. I don't know. I mean, it's it could be sunken. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I don't think it's a, it might not even be considered an ear, but it's definitely an ear canal. <clears throat> this is really an odd creature. It really is. Um, he's he's wet Did and he's so right? he's wet and he's reflecting the sun. Have um, you ever seen a male it, elephant seal? All these clouds. I don't know that I have. That's See, this, odd. These, these are all the spots that I was talking male about. Male elephant seals have the like huge nose. I should look that up then. That sounds interesting. Yep. I think the whiskers will be the most tedious part of this. I think it could. I think they could be. What's that say? Mr. Twist, it's hard to kind of see like the blubber going down its back and like the top of its head. Could you move your camera up a tiny bit? Yes. Like that. Or just move your phone down a little bit. It's still not that great. You're I trying to see the, the top I think of the your wall. Your window might need to come down a little bit. Yeah, you're, I'm trying to see the top of the walrus head so it's easier to draw it. It's on the screen. Could you? Let me drop, is let me there drop any it way? down so you can see it. All right, there it, you go. Yeah, it's way cool. on the screen. It's way on the screen for us. Mm -hmm. Like, like this. Can you guys still see the entire thing? Yeah, very yeah. easily. Yeah. So I'm gonna make this go in the corner. All right. Um, there's two more parts of the head, which are a little bit different. Um, there's a little bump that goes right above the brow ridge. And that's this round, this round part is not actually this, like the, the low part of the skull. It's kind of like the forehead. And then on this guy, which is so interesting, um, instead of the head being perfectly round, it's like there's a round side on the right and then a round side on the left. Hmm. 
my walrus is actually looking like a walrus. Um, that's really, that makes me feel good because I'm like not even sure how well my drawing is going. Um, if you follow the silhouette down here, it's like you can see where the head is. Then, you know, the, just like a horse, the, uh, you know, the neck attaches to like the back of the head, like the top back of the head. So all this down here is neck. And then there's a little bump right here where you go, um, where it turns into his, you know, shoulders and his neck. Um, Xavier, did you have a question? Okay. Um, so let me do that here. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm doing the round nice. part of the skull is up here. Then I'm Very nice, the Ben. And then I'm going to turn into the shoulders. We see a little bit of the neck on this side. And then you can't, there's no separation between the, uh, like the neck and the shoulders on the left. It just blends right in. <clears throat> uh, Miles, can you see the top uh, of his head right now? Did you know Skittles are all the same flavor, but um, the, the color um, tricks you to think they're all different flavors? Um, I had not heard yes, that. Mr. Somehow it I doesn't. Can. Surprise me. Okay, good. Same with um, same with uh, what are they called? Fruit Loops. Yeah, Fruit Loops. And we all know M and M's are the same flavor. Do you know I that know. I was Star just Wars. thinking of M and M's? I just got a Star craving Wars. for M and M's when you started talking about Skittles. Well, then go yeah. get some. Yeah, I don't have any M and M's. I got my biscotti. Anyway, Yum. I'm drawing a glass of water and it looks more animated than it is actually real, but I don't care, so. Um, gentlemen, I'm gonna point out a couple of things on here so that you guys can then, you know, so then I can zoom back out and you can sketch what I'm sketching. Um, so we have the chin, which is the, we have like his chin, which is just the bone structure of his jaw, which is down here. That's like, is like the space between the tusks where the tusk is touching, that's where the mouth. Then we get the double chin. And then what the nice thing about the double chin is that it brings you from the jaw into the neck. So this double chin right here is actually where the neck begins. So then that's the major fold. Then you come down here and this low one down here, this is where the neck ends. So believe it or not, if he was wearing like a gold chain it would come all <laughs> around here. This is where you would see that, sh that shoulder. And then, you know, that's where you'd see the, the neck enters into the shoulders. And then you can actually see his shoulder right here and try to draw it. I mean, try to make it a separate form. I know it all looks like the same thing, but there's like the actual shoulder over here because he's got these massive fins. Um, and then, then that's gonna lead into the belly, which is below. These are actually the, this is his kind of where my, where my, um, Pencil is right now. This is kind of like the armpit. So there's an armpit yeah, here. Yeah, you can like actually see water. a joint. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can kind of like you can almost even see like the nature of the way that the 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 wrinkles are going and the way that the the spots are going. You have wrinkle in the double chin, yes. wrinkle in the neck, and then it turns into the arm back here. And there's the front back of the armpit here, and then the front of the armpit there, front of the armpit here. You don't see the back on that side. Now. The other fun thing about this is that he's just coming out of the water, so much so that the, um, the, his tusks are actually dripping water. And actually, I think it might even be coming out of his like mouth too. <clears throat> so he's sticking out of the water, which is like really fun. Um, and it will, you know, it, the water will come up to it. Now I have to show you this because it's really funny. Excuse me, um, Mr. Twist. I drew this last week, or I drew this on Saturday. And I made it like total cartoon, Bill. Um, but it was actually really fun. And this is yeah, oh fabulous. One of the guy's eyes are like, he's like cross-eyed, but the eyes are out. It's really cool. We're gonna sketch, we're gonna sketch that guy too. Mr. Twist? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You have a question? So something I'd like to uh, like to point out. Um, so in in like uh 3D modeling, there's something called subsurface scattering where you are. Yeah. Uh, where light passes through like light objects like skin or plastic. And yes. this, I see that this, uh, this um, walrus has a lot of it. 
So like uh, lots of light places just blend yeah. in with the background most of the time. Yeah. Like you so, see his back. Yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah. So um, in in visual art, it's um it's off it's often called lost and found. So the line is kind of found here, right? And then the highlight on his nostril, on his nose, is did, like the line separating the, the walrus from the background is lost again. So it's found in the eye, it goes in the forehead, disappears, found in the eye, disappears in the snout, found in the side of the mustache. And then even like, you know, the whiskers, you know, are, you know, disappear into the, the mist of the background. You can do the same thing up here. You can go like lost in the middle, found, found, lost, found, lost, and then it just disappears into the mist. Um, that's also called edging. So what was the what was the term, Jack, in in the digital in, in the computer animation? Uh, subsurface scattering. Where like the surface, the surface light passes through it a multiple amount of times. Nice. Here's my walrus. So That's far. how like like uh, if uh, there there's this one thing I was watching is miles. like uh, somebody edited it where humans without mm -hmm. subsurface Mine? scattering, oh. their skin was very oh. rough. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's it's also true. I mean, um, our skin stuff. is transparent too. Um, so this when smiles. the light passes down below, you know, in you know, goes through the cells, hits lower cells like veins and bones, cartilage, and then bounces back through um, the skin itself. So like your eyes, you know, the the subsurface scattering makes it almost like a semi-transparent um, layer. You could almost use that probably in the edge of the the water here you're kind of looking through the water and seeing the part of the walrus that is immediately under the water before the water has a chance to actually function like a reflection or you might actually it might actually be reflecting it right away but water is a tricky thing sometimes it's reflective sometimes it's transparent um especially when the water is disrupted um it's it's also um you know harder to to see all right, so let's let's just see what more I can get on here, and I'll see if I can. I, I was I really actually want... able to like make like decent water droplets coming from them. <laughs> yeah, you should. Wait, you, what did you say about the evil? You said it looked evil. Oh, I said his eyes look very angry. Um, these whiskers. Now, I don't know what the, the right move is, but on this guy, his whiskers are light whiskers on a dark ground. So you could, if you're working on gray paper, you like I'm working on gray paper here, like I could put this white mist for the background. I could also use it in the whiskers. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to like leave you guys hanging, but um, you can think about rows of whiskers. So I'm going to put these thin rows in here. It actually goes towards the middle. Like towards like his mouth. Again? The whiskers yeah, go towards his mouth. What goes to the mouth? The, the whiskers go towards the mouth. They curve in. Yes, they're like parentheses outside. Inside. You can also see the, uh, the ripples of water around them. Be cool. I cannot wait to draw the water. Uh, um, yeah. So this these is what I have so far. Say it again. This is what I have so far. Let's see. Let's see. Jack, oh. hold that nice and still. He's very handsome. Thank you. I'm glad I you like those white. whiskers. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so in, however you figure out the code for your whiskers, it's really <laughs> great. You have to come up with something that works. You can do two things. One, you know that the biggest ones are going to be on the lower outside. And you know the smallest ones are going to be towards the top and on the inside to the point where they might just be little dots. So I'm going to use little dots and then I'm going to make a couple long ones towards the outside. Little, little teeny guys. A little bit longer. Or longer still. And then you can adjust them. Okay, you can add more. The rows that I put on there were, were supposed to give me like um, kind of like an organization of application. 
and each row, you know, the top row is going to be smallest hairs get longer as they get to the outside, smallest in the inside get longer as they go out. And then that philosophy evolves as you step down. So let me just do this here. So these are getting a little longer as they go to the outside and as they get lower, they even have little droplets on them. It's amazing. And there's, a, there's, it does look like it's a little lost, but there's a really long ones in that corner. Excuse me. Oh, good boy. He's such a funny little, such a funny little walrus. Um, the twin <laughs> is that darker. It's even like those lips, those lips. Um, I am really loving my walrus right now. I'm glad, man, because I'm, I'm like panicking on my walrus. <clears throat> Uh, I okay. this looks like a hom homeless hobo. So I'm gonna add, I did the chin, which I think is still a little bit low. I'm gonna do my double chin. That's gonna be the start of my fat rolls. And the fat rolls actually aren't, there's not, it's not that rolly. Um, it's really, it's almost more of a guide for the, the discoloration and the spots. So, you know, you wanna imagine, you know, these rolls, the wrinkles running you know, in bracelet lines, elliptical lines that run from, you know, 360 degrees, you know, around. And they show up a little bit on the forehead, some creases on the top of the head. <clears throat> um, the last one that we're gonna do is the, I think he's gonna be the last one. It's gonna be a cartoon version of the walrus, but it's the, it's the most naturalistic of the cartoon versions. So if, um, if you experienced uh, bliss or frustration on any of the ones that we've spent so far, this last one should be right in the middle. Like one was too cartoony. This is too realistic. The one that we're about to do is like right in the middle and it should be the, the sweet spot. Um, and the other interesting thing I'm noticing too is like the, um, you know, the upper part of the, the mustache seems like the mustache seems dark. Now, I don't want to overdo it so no one sees my whiskers, but I can add some tone in there. I can add some tone underneath the eye. I'm not scared. I can add some shadows. I can add some light gray. I can add some spots. You know, I can I can actually even draw some of the pink, some of the pink, um, either scarring or abrasions or just the just the, the texture nature of the um, walrus. You know, I can draw around that. Um, I think I'm going to go off of what Jack was doing, where he added the white, the white for that tusk. I think it's going to, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think you can really ever regret using, you know, white on the, uh, the tusks of any animal. You know, it's like that ivory color that's, you know, better, <laughs> well, obviously for worse, but, you know, humans have always found those tusks to be really beautiful and, um, yeah, you know, unfortunately, we've traded in it, but yeah, it was just one. It was before we knew how limited of a resource it really was. Mhm. Mm so you're saying it's like with with like people thinking, all right, rhino horns have these like magical properties. You're saying it's like that, but with walrus tusks. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, and whether whether they're magical properties or just so pure why are they kind of creating people, rings? humans want to capture beauty somehow. Um, and you know, taxidermy is a way of doing that. Painting, photography, even keeping zoos is a way of you know capturing the you know the majesty and the beauty that is um, nature or attempting to capture it. I don't the think lines are kind of like a are kind of like creating a ring. Say it again. The line we're drawing are kind of like creating rings. Yes. Totally. Rings or bracelets. And, you know, I mean, you could also, like, how I'm, like, just making him bigger. <laughs> I mean, like, you can't, if, if the wider you, it's almost like you can't make him too wide. Like, he just keeps <laughs> becoming, like, more walrus-like. Walrus you know, the, the, the bigger he goes. 
So this is where you can kind of get some artistic license. I'm gonna move this for a second. I should not have uh, should not have closed it. I'm gonna zoom out completely because I want to put him actually in the water. So okay. bear with me. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna say what like uh, one more minute on this thing. Oh, he looks I like so your water cool. droplets. Yes, yeah, the water droplets are fantastic. So watch this. I'm gonna draw the water droplets coming off, and then where they hit the water. I'm gonna I'll put some rings and allow them to, you know, that's gonna help guide me into the surface. So there's water going up. He's creating waves. There's waves in the background, like it looks like he was swimming. Um, some ripples and I can even, I, there might even be like reflections of these tusks in the water. Wow. Okay. Um, Trevor, can you square your phone just a tad? Uh, yeah, like that. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, I'm imagining this walrus's voice to be really similar to Eeyore's in uh, Winnie the Pooh, just very yeah. slow and deep and deliberate. I can see that. All right, one more minute, it's 4.53. And then this last one, um, it'll, be, it'll be easy. Having drawn this one, it should be easy. Wish I had a little, I'll actually add some pink. Is it real pink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some peach. Yeah, that makes a big difference. Try to color to the water, but keep the, uh, the, um, the walrus normal. I don't know. Did you use graphite? Yeah. I would keep it. I would probably just keep it. Um, I would just keep it graphite. So I've, I've found that I'm, I've, like when I do the thing on the, on the screen, like when I do zoom, mixing colored pencils and uh, graphite together work. Um, in real life, if you were to see this drawing in real life, it, it would not, it would not look good. So you, you do want to keep them, keep them separate for yourself. Those look awesome, dudes. Hey, Jack, hold that nice and still, okay? All Thank right. you. Let's try this last one. And I think you guys will like it. He is very funny and a lot easier than the ones we just did. Ooh, it's outer cross-eyed guy. Miles, hold that nice and still. Oops. I need to be Oop, didn't get you, Miles. Hold that straight for me. Sorry, I actually got out of the up. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So what I was telling the other class is that he uses the nostrils almost to make like be, like the beginnings of what a heart would be. So I'm just going to draw the literal heart so you can kind of see what I mean. And then he's got nostril holes, not staples, but little arches. And then the main thing that this guy does is um, he does give us the middle of the lip, but instead of having two separate, um, instead of having two separate nostril uh, uh, upper lips, he like links it up almost as if it's one piece of pizza with like a third of it cut out. So like this side arches around and it's the same circle as the other side. So the bottom corner arches to the top. So if I come like up here, there's this circle and then the circle just continues around. And his head is turned, of course. So you, you know, you're getting less lip on this side than on this side. But it's just like kind of a different framework um, with which to see the walrus. Um, I can't even, the, you're seeing the entire image by the way. So the, the, you can see, you can imagine the tusks keep going. Um, so anyway, let's not make the same mistake I did before and go into the tusk and the mouth and stuff. Let's do the eyes. We're gonna do the iris and the pupil and then this thick, um, eyelid situation, dark eyelids on either side. 
Look at this googly eye. So do the white of the sclera, the black of the pupil, and then the googly eye on the outside. Kind of like my first illustration, he's got this low round head. When I say low, meaning like it's like close to the eyes. And it runs off screen. Um, for this, for my um, tusks, I mean, I might even just do the tusks first and then do the mouth. I'll end mine so that at least they fit on my paper. So again, we got nose, huge upper lip, tusks, eyes, low round head. Um, you can link up the eyebrows again, just like we did in the last one. And then the rings and discoloration, you know, are true for this guy as well. So um, we get the mouth, we get the lip, and we get the double chin, and then we start getting the wrinkles. I'm going to make this guy get wide. Part of the um, definition that this artist uses is a, you know, a really dark silhouette, really dark mouth and then a light gray shading that includes all of the nose and the upper lip. So he's got a dark outside and then a gray mustache. So what was and the this, looks like you surprised like, he can be cross-eyed or upset cross-eyed? Say it again. What about the cross-eyed? I mean, they do look cross-eyed. Kind of looks like he's surprised like he's opposite cross-eyed. Yes, yeah. they go. Um, it looks like he's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not facing in, but facing out. Yes, or at, least, or at least a lazy eye. Um, here he offers a little bit of texture for the um, ivory of the tusks themselves, which I think is interesting. And he also follows suit with the notion that the whiskers are shorter on the inside and get longer on the outside. He doesn't follow the top to bottom rule, but that's okay. Um, and he does use dots um, and he does radiating lines that are dots. So there's like, you can see these dots that are strung up, you know, radiating out from the center. They're obviously more spaced out. And guys, this is um, also, again, just a cartoon. It's a slightly more anatomically correct cartoon. Um, but it still takes um, you know, artistic liberty. Artistic liberty means that um, you do what's best for your, the, the purpose of your picture, um, not necessarily um, what's scientifically or anatomically correct. I mean, that's how it's used in artist, artistic liberty is that's how it's used in this context. Oh, hello, Mr. Walrus. Hello, hello, hello. I do really like the, uh, I do really like the um, discoloration and some of the spots and the wrinkles that show up on this guy. Oh, that's why it won't yeah. work. My tripod's blocking it. Okay, there we go. Does anyone Are you see wearing a mask, Miles? He's got an app, the mask app. It's funny that um, on the cartoon one, it's like the whiskers are sticking up on the realistic one, the whiskers were sticking in. Yes, they were steeper on the on the real one. I might even make these longer because it looks cooler. <clears throat> yeah, it gives a whole different look to it. Um, I love Does anyone the see the upside down Mickey Mouse? Spots are really toned. They look all little circles, which I think was true for the realistic one too. There were the abrasions and the discolorations and the um, texture, they felt like they were all rounded, like almost like warts or something like that. This guy is not my favorite to draw. Agreed. Uh, 
You mean this walrus? And why is that? Because I think I liked... it's too much of a mix between realisticness and cartoon. Because if you look at it, it really mm -hmm. it it has the proportions. I think you can either go with realistic or cartoon, but when you try to mix the two, it goes below realist. It goes below unrealisticness. Right, so it's not wonky. it's not quite as beautiful as realism, but it's not like as entertaining as full cartoon. Yeah, yeah it, that that that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, I think just I don't think mix the two. You can either <laughs> you can do one, one or the way. other. Yeah. You can mix a little with proportions, <clears throat> but don't go all out mix. Um. Yeah, I don't know what class I'm going to do this with. But this is the one I want. I keep wanting to draw this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great looking. <laughs> I think that guy's hilarious. Well, Holy one of the things mackerel. I like. Too, it's 501. He's got a nice. Uh, the mustache yeah, looks like a cap, mustache. Here's my, uh, the mustache. Here's my uh, other walrus, the one that we just did. Oh man, Jack. Excuse me? Great. Yeah, you, and that one. Oh, no, that you, made, you made the cartoon one look more realistic. Nice. Nice, movement. Jack. Hold I on. I think we should here. start with on this one. I liked my, I liked the realistic one more. Back up, yeah. Xavier. Yeah, Thank you. If it was five or two, was the real, yeah, realistic one, you're you able to go. actually get. Little closer to when you're able to get like no, I'm you not sure what I've been doing away from the uh, screen. Yeah, let's see, Jack. So I basically tried to make a cartoonic realistic water. Uh-huh. And this is how it turned out. Cool. I like uh -huh. your bubbles. I have to pin yeah. you. Hold on. Pin. Thank you. Yeah, he's great. That water is fantastic. Um, next week, um, yeah, next week. Oh, I'm we ran out of over, time. <coughs> I'm going to go over um, ellipses next Got week. Got it, Ben. Like a really, really, really good ellipse Thank lesson. Thank you. <clears throat> um, hopefully, Stacy, can you remind me that we got to do ellipses? Absolutely, it's done. Can I see your final, Mr. Um, Twist? Mr. Twist. Bye, guys. See y'all. Uh, um, hold on, this. Yeah, I'm listening. For a next week, I have like an idea that that I think is like a good challenge. That's like fun, and it and it will be like a good challenge. Uh yeah. What is it? Um, one. Ever. Sorry. One Stace, sec. I um, I don't have a specific drawing of it. Should I share my screen, or what should I do? They do a take next time. A what? Ben, tank. what was that? What's a take? He said tank because you said that we were going to do that sometime where we were going to have a theme of tanks and crabs. Hmm. What with crabs? Tanks and crabs. Um, That's what Mr. Twist said that we would do in the nearby the future. Unit. What are like tanks? The dancing crab. Like a tank? Yeah, Ben said he wanted to draw tanks and crabs in like oh, one oh, like, session. Oh, like like a tank, like a uh, like a blow em up tank, army tank. Yeah, yeah, or a fish, with a fish tank. Crabs. Uh, yeah, but not not a fish like tank. Like this tank. Crab. So you mean like this kind of tank? Mr. That kind of tank. Best, it's five oh four. Got it. Okay. So, Thanks, Xavier. Yeah, I think I think Ben next week is a good day for tanks and crabs. Actually, um, um, also I don't know um, if we'll Mr. do them. Twist. We'll definitely Mr. be doing. Twist. Tanks. Yeah. Um, I have this like really cool picture <laughs> of a wolf. It's like a galaxy wolf. If you can allow me to share my screen, I can show you it. Um, I would. I mean, I would like to for everybody. I don't know how to do it. I think well, you go um, in participants and click on 
someone and I think a bunch of stuff would show up. You can like make them co-host and then they'll be able to share a screen. Um, all right, um, Miles, do you guys have, do you guys have my email address? Nope. You know what? Hold it up. The, I can take a I'm picture. I'm writing it down. It's the Mitchell School at Gmail. So just it's email me. Email email me the um, the image. Mitchell School. Is it at gmail.com or just at gmail? Yeah, at gmail.com. All lowercase. Doesn't matter. M I T C A P L. So just down. email me, email me your ideas, and I'll sift through them. And because um, I don't know how to do screen share, and we have to go. Um, anyway. Cool. So Miles, send it to me. Okay, guys. Um, we'll see you next week. Is it at gmail.com or at gmail.com? Great. I made a form of it at school, but like the re I wanted to show you the real picture of it. If yeah, you can I print it up really email. fast, or just to email it to Mr. Twist. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Right, see you guys. Hi, How are you? See you, Xavier. Wow. Quite a quite a sesh. I'm not at the top. What of did you here. say to write down about next week? Did it begin with an S? Cylinders? Uh, yeah, ellipses. <laughs> ellipses. Ellipses. Tanks. And crabs. crabs. Yeah. But we'll do definitely do tanks. And there's lots of ellipses in tanks. So that'll be good. Like, oh, um, boy. Yeah. Tire, tire steam from the side and things like that. Oh my gosh, I need a coffee so bad. I'm so tired. out of coffee. Oh. Did you? I'm out of coffee. There's nothing else hidden anywhere that no, could be I... like a week old. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> what are you doing, Tuck? Huh? Hey, Tucker. Um, oh, right, my Steve, goodness. Are you coming to? Um, are you coming to class tonight? I are, but I won't be there until close to seven. All right, well, just text me and I'll let you in. Okay, thank you so much, and I'll send pictures later. Okay, thanks, Stace. Thank you, thank you.